I think that it. I'll make sure I'm not gonna get too too bad of feedback. Okay, that's. Ladies and gentlemen, your exclusive music experience is about to take flight. Join us now for a performance with real heart at the Southwest Soundstage presented by iHeartMedia. You guys give it up for Kay Flay, making her debut on the Southwest Soundstage. Welcome to Radio 105.7 World Headquarters. Uh, welcome to Atlanta. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, guys. Kay Flay's playing at the Masquerade tonight. Many of you hopefully already have tickets. Do you know if there's still tickets left to that show? Um, I don't know. Kay. There may not be. There might be a couple. By the time this, no this session is over, we will have that information. Okay. Somebody back there, look it up. I'll be the suspense of this, this <laughs> whole time, waiting for that information. Well, congratulations on your EP that came out in August. Thank you very much. Fantastic. And I'm reading that you've got a brand new album coming out in April. Yes, April 7th. Okay. And tell us, as a room full of people who are big fans of yours, what, what we can expect on the new album in April. So the new, the new record uh, also contains the EP. Okay. So, um, And I think that's like a little bit of a prelude to the just the vibe of it um but i'm i'm really excited about it really proud of it i think it just sort of expands thematically on some of the stuff um that's in the ep and you know there's just more space with the record but there's some there's some quiet ones some not quiet ones and yeah feeling pretty good we're <laughs> we're mastering it on thursday so i'm kind of like <gasps> i'm sh i'm in like distress mode I'm, I'm i'm like approving some mixed stuff so anyway i'm kind of the pressure is I on i feel like I'm eight months pregnant, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you look incredibly Thank you. thin. Or <laughs> Thank you. I um, feel great. And, and you're, the, you're the first signee from Dan of, uh, yes. uh, of Imagine Dragons. This is kind of his imprint, correct? Exactly. How involved is he creatively in, in what's, uh, aside from signing you, obviously, was, was yeah. his choice. How, how involved is he in the rest of the creative process? Dan's been great. I mean, I think from the get-go, he was like, as, as much as you want, me to be involved um i will be so he's he's a great resource i think especially as a solo artist you don't you don't have a band per se you know to help s sometimes make these decisions and and compare mixes or you know compare versions of songs so dan's been great in the mix process uh, and you know coming to the shows giving feedback and it's, it's good to talk to someone too who has that level of experience touring in a in a pretty big capacity it's the best kind of boss I'm here if you yeah. need me otherwise do your own thing exactly and he's been great um, you know and I think for him he just wanted to to be able to give another artist autonomy and, and resources which is kind of the, the the dream situation and the support for more than the f 
you know, for 15 minutes because that's not how long it takes to develop a career. No, this takes longer. <laughs> right. Well, you're crushing it. Um, you want to play a song for us? Um, yeah. So this is Josh, by the way. Josh. Uh, and we're going to, this first song's uh, a song off the EP, and it is called Hollywood Forever. I moved to uh, L.A. about nine months ago, and there's a cemetery there called Hollywood Forever, which is pretty psychotic of a name for a cemetery. Uh, though it is beautiful and they've got an amazing venue there. We actually did the release party for the EP there. So it's a great spot, but um, I was driving down the street and kind of came up with the idea for this song. And here it is. So my next question is about live performing. Yeah. And how vastly different this is, obviously, than your regular live show. And mm -hmm. a lot louder, and you probably not sitting as much. <laughs> no Just sitting. Just a guess. In fact. Uh, <laughs> unless on the floor, or kind of laying. You okay. Know, That's maybe nap. towards the end. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um, Just give up. But you, you've obviously performed in rooms that hold a couple hundred people. You've performed at festivals that have people as far as you can see. Which of those? Just personally, let's pretend like exposure is not a thing and, and paycheck is not a thing. Personally, w which of those is your favorite as an artist? 
the, definitely the smaller clubs. Um, I mean, I think just I, I go to a lot of shows when, when I'm off the road, other people's shows, and those are the ones that I like to be at. You know, I think there's, a, there's an intimacy there. And like uh, it's sort of, and not to say we're not having these experiences anymore in the in the modern age, but it's nice to to be with people um, all kind of united in a common cause, I guess, which is essentially to have a good show, you know, because people on stage want that, the crew wants that, the venue wants that, the audience wants that, so it feels just kind of nice, I guess. It makes me feel less sad about the future of the world. <laughs> Well, and they're closer to you, too, to make them seem more real as opposed to that guy yeah. at the beer cart down there. And and I think there's, like, more spontaneity. I, I don't know. You can hear people shout stuff and, and reply. You know, there's, like, more. it's more of an interactional space, I find, than just a, a bigger festival crowd, even though that's awesome for exposure and everything else. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I'm glad that you were able to do this, too, because some, some artists are not feeling the, the stripped-down thing, so I really appreciate you Oh, we love it, actually. It. We... Yeah, we enjoy doing it. It's kind of a nice, um, sometimes it's nice to like think about things in a different way. Well, and it's also, a that was vague, some of them sound like completely different songs than totally, what you hear totally. from the record. Or So that's why, that's why we like it. It kind of peels back the layers a little yeah. bit. Um, all right, so collaborations, very big. Mm -hmm. right? Actually, Linkin Park just released one that has with Kiara, who's mm -hmm. a big pop star. Um, two questions. Mm -hmm. If you could have someone call you and say, hey, I've got this song, I need a verse, I want you to guest on it and send you the music, who would that, who, who would that be? Well, I mean, I don't know if, if this would be a verse scenario, but I'm a, I'm a big Karen O fan, so that would be a pretty good experience for me. Okay. The phone call would be good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, that would be really cool. In fact, I was just listening to, um, she has that duet with Ezra from Vampire Weekend. So beautiful. And I was like, man, that'd be fun to do. A different version of. So maybe that. All right. So on the flip of that, mm -hmm. for your record coming out in April. Yes. If you could have someone come in, not their music, but your music, and them come and just kind of offer a verse or with perform me. with you, duet with you, who do you think? Would be would be great for that. Well, probably a lot of people. Um, there's a, actually a dude from Atlanta, this guy named Black with a six. I don't know if you guys know him. He's mm -hmm. awesome. I actually just saw him play in L.A. Okay. Um, it was a really really cool show. So that, I think that would be cool. Oh, that'd be and that's an Atlanta special, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like Atlanta. We have we have a pretty hot, a pretty incredible hotbed no. of, of yeah, artists. Yeah, we love Atlanta. There, right? Truly, truly, yeah. truly. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the the guy opening up. For us, uh, the first of three on this tour is from Atlanta. Really? His name's Daya Jack, yeah. Okay. And he's awesome. I'll have to look him up, too. Yeah, for sure. Are right, you going to play another song for us? Yeah. Cool. Going to do another one. This is kind of a, a, a throwback a little bit. Uh, to I, I put out a record called Life is a Dog, and this, this is a song from that. With a cold chain in my soul and saying no thanks. I can you where it goes, cause I'm not thanks. They shouldn't have told me. Now I'm thinking, what for? Hanging by a sentence at the drugstore. Barely even steady at the front door. Hate my own shit, but I love yours. Yeah, I really love yours. A seven in the afternoon, half asleep, count the cards. Think about is you constantly. That's the hard part. Static on the line. I hear it outside, but I'm quiet when you make me play. I feel it coming back. Watch it turn to black, but I'm brighter when you make. Fade, you made me fade, you 
to my ankles. Sunny, but I need another angle. Waiting by a payphone, trying to be a cop that. Some awful information that I thought of. But they think I've been messing with the wrong stuff. Nah, I've been messing with the rush. Yeah, I think I like it. Waiting for the car to call. Who could say it was easy? I sat about the bad I've done on my grave. Please believe me, it's not gonna lie. I hear it all the time, but I'm quiet when you make me fail. I feel it coming back. Watch it turn to black. Swear I've been trying to reach you, I'm dying You kill me while you keep your phone all on silent Recognize my role, I fucked up the timing Put you in LA, be been acting like Alice Make a go on to get stupid and violent But silently I've been eyeing the horizon Patterns repeat, it shouldn't be surprising No, you know you made me This is a 404 session live from the Southwest Soundstage with Kay Flay. By the way, I forgot to re-mention that last time for editing purposes. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's 404? Is that that's our uh, area code? That's our area code. Cool. Right. Um, I figured, but although the, although the city is growing so so quickly that it's we just can't we can't stay on top of it. I it's know. So you, you gotta, if you have one, you should hold on to it because in a few years, people are going to be like, they want I that. want that 404. I want that original 404. Mm -hmm. That's right. So. Yeah, apparently, uh, just, just yesterday, the um, world's worst traffic came list came out in Atlanta, number seven, not in the country, in the world. Of course, you guys in LA, you got us beat, so. <laughs> yeah, I try, to, I try not to drive too much. Smart. Just walk. You know, that's the weird thing about L.A. That's kind of one thing that I find strange, that it's so nice all the time and nobody walks. It's not a, real, it's not a walking town. But the weather is Weather's incredible. Great. Yeah, that is bizarre. Weather's great. It's the smog, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I was blown away yesterday by the fact that it, it would have been Kurt Cobain's 50th birthday, mainly, beca mainly because that means that I'm way older than I <laughs> <laughs> think that I am <laughs> or want to admit that I am. Um, but Kurt Cobain didn't didn't just I inspire people musically. I feel like for his genre, he for for an entire you know generation of people as an artist. Um, who, when you were young, before you were that you knew this is what you wanted to do for a living? Mm -hmm. Who who were the artists who just really spoke to you? Whether not genre specific, just people who you thought this person is creative and captivating. Well, I mean. Part of that answer is that I didn't, 
I didn't become super like emotionally invested in music until college. Like I listened to music, but it wasn't my lifeline in any way. Like I wasn't, I wasn't living and, and dying by it. But that being said, I grew up listening to a lot of hip hop, um, and I was actually huge and still am a huge Outkast fan. I did I did an EP. My, like one of the greatest things that happened in my life was I I um, recorded and mixed an EP at Stankonia which was really cool um, and kind of special for me. But yeah, and I think wh when I uh, got to college and really started digging into stuff that would later, you know, influence me and meant a lot to me was like a lot of left of center rap, um, both from the US and, and the UK, like Dizzy Rascal's first record was real, very influential for me. Um, and then on the flip side, I listened to a lot of like 90s kind of female, um, Thumped stuff. Liz Fair's first record was also a big one for me. Exile and Guyville, if you guys know that. Um, and I'm a huge metric fan as well. So a lot of that stuff I didn't start listening to though until I was 18, 19. And then growing up, I just listened to like you know, the Beatles, Zeppelin, stuff your parents were listening stuff to. Stuff my parents, yeah. which is great stuff. Yeah, but it's great. And like folk music, like Joni Mitchell. And but you never thought I'm going to be a pop star. No, I still don't <laughs> think that, but, um, <laughs> but definitely not as a child. No, um, no I wasn't, yeah, I was kind of a, a late bloomer in the, in the musical sense, but I'm glad, I, I'm glad I found it eventually. Well, I think that adds honesty to what you're, what you're writing about. You're, you're writing about things that are special to you, not just writing a hit for, to make yourself famous. Totally. Um, I think, yeah, music is kind of this, this pretty special thing once you tap into whatever you love about it. Once you find that, then it's it's kind of a reason to exist. Well, you're obviously a great wordsmith. D do you ever get to the point where you write something that is is kind of melancholy in, in the lyrics and mm -hmm. then go, well, if I wrote a song that had a melody to go with this, it would be a funeral dirge and I don't want to do that. Do you sometimes feel like the, the, the music doesn't match up with the lyrics sometimes as far as one se seeming and sounding happy where you're actually talking about something very dark? Well, I think, I think there's something good about that tension, potentially, mm -hmm. depending on what you're aiming for. But for me, I do try to temper some of that stuff. Um, like even that last song is kind of a bummer, the lyrics, but it doesn't feel like, I don't think it feels like, you know, overly um, maudlin or something. But yeah, so I think, I think it's nice sometimes to have like a darker lyric with a, with a, kind of more a happier sounding thing. Um, but then sometimes you just gotta go Elliot Smith on him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Bummed, <laughs> super bummed. He's amazing, but. but that's, where, that's where a lot of our greatest music comes from though. Totally. From very, very dark places. Yeah. So thanks again for coming. Of course, thank you guys for being here. Thanks for having me. Gonna play another song for us? Yeah, we got, we got one more for you. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, this one I, uh, I wrote in, actually in my parents' basement over Christmas time, not this Christmas, but the last one. And so that was in the Bay Area, and then ended up recording it and finishing it out just outside Nashville, so not too far from here. Stone's Throw, to, a, to a, the alien from Men in Black at the end. Okay. <laughs> ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. This song's called Blood in the Cut. got another girl He might be fucking her right now I don't have an apartment Thought if I was smart I'd make it far but I'm still at the start Guess I can say just It'd be safest if you ran Fuck, that's what they all just end up doing in the end Take my car and paint it black Take my arm, break it and I Say something, do it soon it's too quiet in this room, I need noise I need the buzz of a sub, need the crack of a whip Need some blood in the cut, I need noise I need the buzz of a sub, need the crack of a whip Need some blood in the cut, I need the blood
Francisco I don't have an agenda All I do is pretend to be okay So my friends can't see my heart in the blender And lately, I've been killing all my time Reading through your messages, my favorite way to die Take my head and kick it in Pray some bread for all my sins Say what, do it so It's too quiet in this room, I need noise I need the buzz of a sub Need the crack of a rip Need some blood in the cup I need noise I need the buzz of a sub Need the crack of a rip Need some blood in the cup I need the blood in the cup I need the blood in the cup much really appreciate it we're oh. gonna give you a chance to uh pop back into into your room for a second okay and then we'll get everybody lined up for a little uh amazing meet and greet cool thank you guys again. you guys give it up again for k flay <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> 